So in this video, we're going to be talking about Newton's free laws. And then we'll discuss each law separately. So the first law says that an object remains at rest or in constant motion until a net external force acts on it. And the second law says that the acceleration of an object is proportional and in the same direction as the net external force. And the third law says that for every action, there is a reaction equal and opposite in direction to the force that exerts it. So let's start with the first law. An object remains at rest or is in constant motion until a net external force acts on it. So what does this mean? So it can mean that there are no net forces that are acting on the object, which would cause it to roll. Or it can mean that the object is rolling, but the horizontal forces cancel out. So let's see an example. Suppose your car breaks down and you need to push it off the road. You need to apply enough force to get the car to move. This means your force must be enough to lead to a net external force. The word net is important here because there are actually two forces, your pushing force and the static friction of the car working against you. We'll come back to this when we look at Newton's second law. Let's assume first that your pushing force isn't enough to get the car to move and so there is no net external force. The car is too heavy. So this means that the mass of an object is related to inertia, which is related to how fast the object accelerates. You can think of inertia as a tendency to maintain the current state of motion, such as not moving or is resistance to change in the state of motion, such as is resistance to move. Now, we said that this depends on mass, so let's compare. If we have a small mass, such as one kilogram, then it will be easier for the car to accelerate quickly because it's easier to change its state of motion from not moving to moving. It's much harder to change the state of motion of the car that weighs five tons. So you can't change the object's inertia without changing the object's mass. How about this? You're driving at constant speed because there is no external force that is accelerating you forwards or backwards until you suddenly hit a wall. Now, if you don't wear seat belts, you fly out through the front window. This is because your body is still in constant motion while the car has stopped. So if you don't have seat belts, there is nothing holding you back. In other words, because there is no net external force acting on you that would change your state of motion, you keep moving forward at constant speed. So Newton's second law says that acceleration is always in the direction of the net force. We express this as F net equals MA. And mass is related to acceleration which also depend on the net force involved. So the net force is related to acceleration and mass expresses inertia. And the mass of the object determines how fast it accelerates. Let's go back to our car example. Let's say you are able to move the car up a hill at constant speed. This means that your force must be as large as the force of gravity. Otherwise, the car would just roll back down. This means that the net force is zero as the car keeps going uphill. Now, if you don't stop pushing at the top of the hill, the force of gravity will be in the same direction as your pushing force. This will cause a large acceleration downwards. So now, what does the third law offer? It says that for every action, there is a reaction equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force that exerts it. But what does this mean? Suppose that car that ran off on you rolls down the hill and hits a rock. The car exerts a force on the rock and the rock exerts a force on the car. These forces are an action-reaction pair and are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. This is why both objects are damaged to some extent. An object can't exert a force on another object without experiencing a force itself. 
Let's see another example. A bird flies in the air. How does it get lift? Part of the reason is that when the wings of the bird push air downwards, which is the action, air pushes the bird up, which is the reaction. So in this way, in this case the seagull is able to fly and not fall down or get pushed up too high. Action-reaction forces are the reason that a space vessel is able to go into space. So how does this work? Well, let's see. For a vessel to be sent into space, you need enough energy to create gas downwards, which is the action, and this allows you to get thrust, which is the reaction. So because of the gas, you actually fly backwards. And the gas exerts a force upwards on the ship, which is the reaction. Now let's see if you are paying attention. Which free body diagram best describes an action-reaction pair? You can pause the video and have a minute to think about this. The answer is A. This is because when the two objects hit each other, one object exerts a force on the other, which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. C is not correct, because one object is exerting two forces on the other. D is not correct, because the objects aren't actually exerting forces on each other. You might think B is correct, but actually one force is a different force and a different magnitude. We'll explain this further in another chapter. So let's just review the three laws quickly. The first law says that an object remains at rest or is in constant motion until a force acts on it. The second law says the acceleration is in the same direction as the net force, and mass is related to acceleration. And the last law says that for every action there is a reaction that is equal and opposite in direction to the force that exerts it. I hope that you found this video helpful.